Hey guys, Damien here. Uh, further, uh, another sleepy vlog. I think this is sleepy vlog, what, number five or four? Um, further embracing the idea that I am a comic book obsessive rather than a comic book collector. Um, not that I don't do a little bit of comic book collecting. I do a ton of comic book reading. But I do a ton of obsessing over things. I thought I'd just look at some of the things that I've obsessed about over the years, um, on and off, fed, no doubt, by the community. I've been obsessed with Commandy, <clears throat> in no particular order here, and um, I've on numerous occasions taken the Commandy archives and omnibuses out of the library also, um, oh. and I own all of the commandies that are available on digital, which I think is about 27 of them. I own them also digitally, most of which I own in hard copies. And I loved Commandy when I was a kid. And I've, I, in the, when I first discovered um, eBay, I bought a whole bunch of comics, Commandy comics on eBay. I think, when was that? Late 90s? I don't know. Um... And then I uh, have bought more Commandies recently. I've lost Commandies over the years. Um, certainly don't have any that I had as a kid. Um, but yeah, I, I've joined in. So I thought I'd start with Commandy. This is a book I've obsessed about. You know, a lot because of the Jack Kirby art. It's kind of the ideal boys comic book, really. Um... It's kind of weird, Commandy the Last Boy on Earth, but there are definitely other humans that show up every now and then. But essentially, the human race is gone, and talking animals have taken over. So, for a long time, my obsession did not extend to the non-Jack Kirby issues, but now I, I want to have them all. Um, and when they come out in an omnibus of some good quality, I'll definitely buy that. And... Uh, and I will continue to buy all, if they release more on digital issues, I'll buy the digital issues. I will look for better quality copies of the ones that I don't have in good condition yet. Um, there's a few, I guess I don't have Commandy number one anymore, and there's a, although I have the reprint of it. There's a few of the earliest issues that I don't have in single issue copies. But I certainly have everything in one version or another, <clears throat> and I will be happy to continue to get different versions of them, except I just, I seem to refuse to get these, but maybe I'll break down, these omnibuses that aren't printed on very good paper. If they're going to be comic book quality paper, I might as well just read the original comic books. I'd love an oversized slick copy. So, another thing that I've obsessed about on and off, and I'm obsessing about a lot right now, too, is, thanks to things like this, is The Spirit uh, by Will Eisner. Considered, oh, it's not even going to fully show. I'm in an awkward position here with my iPad, filming with my iPad and not seeing what I'm filming. Um, so, this is the artist's edition of The Spirit. And, um, you know... It's a beautiful thing, as everyone who's looked at artist editions knows. And it's, um, I should do a video just discussing it more, and I've just never gotten around to that. And, I've, and I want to enjoy it so much that I kind of put off, you know, just, I should spend a whole day just reading it and looking at the art. To me, the Spirit series, uh, at least the later part of it, where it was really, like from 1944 on, or 45 on, uh, just brilliant, engrossing, every story, or almost every story feels different. So I have amassed a lot of spirit stuff, some of which I've shown before, or most of which I've shown before, and I, I don't have everything here, and I haven't collected everything yet. Um, there's lots of s spirits done in recent years that weren't by Will Eisner. Um, perhaps they started doing that in the 90s, and 
come on and off. There was a really cool Darwin Cook series of the Spirit, which I don't have all of it of. And Spirit by Will Eisner has been published in so many different formats. Um, <clears throat> I bought a few of these archive editions, but they're not really fully satisfying. There's a, a paperback from DC. You got the, uh, as I showed recently, lots of kitchen sink spirits with the nice new watercolory kind of covers to them. The old Warren spirits, <clears throat> which need to go back in bags. So you just get a sense. I, I've obsessed about this now from age 14 to age 52. Um, and probably will continue. My latest... Oh, I've got several copies of that one. Sure, I, my latest favorite item is this 3D spirit, which I believe I got for half price. But it's kind of amazing. You, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get the spirit, because, but it's hard. It takes some hunting down. Because... Although some people sell some of these Warren spirits for a lot of money, I guess, but everything that I have is reprints. I guess the next thing to do is to hunt down the old spirit newspaper sections, which is where they all originally come from. But those are um, very expensive and I assume very deteriorated. But I should try that when I feel like spending larger amounts of money, which is an issue. Um, it's easier to obsess over things that I can buy a lot of without spending too much money, to tell you the truth. So let's see, what else have I obsessed about? Now with all of these things, I've managed to dig up stuff quickly. I probably have more in my collection. I have more that I, um, that I have lost over the years, given away over the years. Another thing I've obsessed over a lot is the Jack Kirby and Stan Lee run on the Fantastic Four. I think it's one of the greatest comic book runs of all time. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so I own it in many copies and will continue to buy. I want to get the Omnibuy, the large size, oversized omnibuses of it. The first Fantastic Four I ever read was drawn by... Rich Buckler. I don't know if I can find it here. Um, ah, it was this issue. It was Submariner versus the Fantastic Four in his new outfit as Sue Storm. They thought they thought that the Submariner had kidnapped Sue Storm, but in fact, she had left Reed and wanted a divorce. So she was joining... Anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about that. But the thing is, Rich Buckler aped Jack Kirby's style, and it eventually sent me back to the originals, and I became obsessed with them, and I've read them in lots of different forms, and it's propelled me into reading other versions of the Fantastic Four over the years and keep coming back to them, hoping for something good. So anyway, that's, that's another thing that I've obsessed over at times. <clears throat> A little surprising, even to me, is um, Wolverine. There was a time... So some of these I'm currently obsessed by, some I'm not. But there was a time when I was obsessed by Wolverine and... Um, pardon me. And part of what is surprising about that is it was all about, for me, the Mark Silvestri Wolverine. There it is. I used to own all the Mark Silvestri color Wolverines, and I went back and, at the time, picked up all the other issues. Now I just seem to have them in these cruddy essential versions. I did just recently, I own, I remember buying off the newsstand the Chris Claremont Frank Miller miniseries, and now I own it in hardback. So that was probably the beginning of a uh, Wolverine obsession. I am now utterly sick of Wolverine. I shouldn't say Mark Silvestri alone. I should say the Mark Silvestri, Larry Hama 
uh, series. Was it Hammer? Let's see. Yeah, it was Hammer. Series of Wolverine I thought was really cool at the time. Another thing I've obsessed over, and I don't own any of the original issues anymore, I'd like to get color ones, is Warlock. And not just the Jim Starlin Warlock. As a kid, I think either I or a friend had this first issue of uh, Marvel premiere featuring the power of Warlock, in which um, Roy Thomas and Gil Kane took a character called Him, an obscure little character for Him from the Fantastic Four, and turned him into Warlock, and sent him off to Counter Earth. And then, and th there was a really cool little run of Gil Kane Warlock, uh, but which was wrapped up by Herb Trimp in the Hulk. And then, suddenly, um, Jim Starlin, my favorite artist at the time he was active, popped over from Captain Marvel to do Warlock, and that was extremely excited. I remember being extremely obsessed by it, and by um, Starlin's artwork, and the Warlock's plot and characters, and spent a lot of time obsessing about that as a kid. So, there's that. Another huge obsession, which goes back to early comic book buying times, is The New Gods. And I used to own scattered issues of The New Gods. And then sometime in the 80s, they came out, and I don't own them anymore. Um, they came out with uh, these Baxter paper editions, and I own all of those and save them. And since I bought another full run of those, the New Gods, the 11 issues of um, Jack Kirby's original creation, and I am also, also was obsessed by Mr. Miracle, um, who's part of the whole fourth world, plot line world. I never had got into as much Forever People, but I still, you know, really like them and, and like owning issues of them. And there's also uh, Jimmy Olsen, which I know I have a trade paperback of that, but I can't find it. Um, and the obsession with the New Gods has led me to buy lots of later versions uh, of all sorts, and of all sorts of quality. Uh, and often I've picked up issues of comics just because there's some kind of New Gods uh, fourth world connection, like I bought the first issue of Vibe recently just because of the boom tube connection. But I didn't really get into it, and I didn't continue buying Vibe. But So it just goes on and on, the recurringness of all that Kirby created in The New Gods. Uh, of course, I just talked about that in my greatest comics ever kind of thing. Forever, people. I won't show everything. And then it's even led me to pick up things like Godland for the kind of referentialness to The New Gods that that has. So yeah, and everyone who's anyone seems to want to take a crack at the new gods, it seems to me, like Walt Simonson and John Byrne and um, multiple others. Now they're doing a little bit with them in Wonder Woman. And Anyway, so that's been an obsession that's definitely come back over and over over the years. Almost as much, or just as much as Commandy, I'd say. Um, for me, the New Gods were like the first thing that kind of Kirby thing that utterly blew my brain. I think the first issue I got was about the Deep Six when I was 11 or something like that. Okay, another huge obsession that keeps coming back is Conan. And I've been looking at. Conan artwork, as people may know recently in my vlogs, and uh, collecting more versions of things, particularly of Barry Smith period Conan. Um, I've had these for years. I have a few more hidden away somewhere. They, At some point, they reprinted all the Barry Smith Conan in um, these mass market digest paperbacks that you could buy at bookstores, suppose, or probably at newsstands and um, grocery stores. Even those say Stanley presents on them from Ace Books. And 
I use, I've multiple times collected the Conan paperbacks. Lots of times collected Savage Sword of Conan. I don't know where all those went. Lots of other versions of Conan. Um, all sorts of... I don't know how many times I've bought reprints of the Barry Smith Conans. Conan Saga, which I don't seem to have anymore. And of course, this issue of Conan, I now have signed by John Buscema, which was the third comic book I ever bought in my life. Um, and I certainly obsessed over that comic book when I had when it was one of the few comic books I owned. So I'm getting close to things that I've obsessed about that I happen to have managed to pull up here. One interesting little obsession back in the 90s was with Archer and Armstrong. I spent a lot of time hunting these down, and it kind of connects to Conan, because it was, for me, a, a return of Barry Smith. And Barry Smith was doing the writing. I don't know if he created these characters, or Jim Shooter created them. They don't talk a lot about that now that they've revived Archer and Armstrong, about who created them. But Barry Smith's art was beautiful. His scripts were hilarious. Um, who knew he was such a good comedy script writer. Um, I picked up the first issue of the current Archer and Armstrong and it just seemed like a pale shadow of what Barry Smith did. Eventually Barry Smith left it and uh, I continued picking up all of the Archer and Armstrongs that he didn't do, but I don't know if I've actually read them all. But So yeah, this was probably an obsession that you know went on for a few months way back when, but I still am very interested in going back and rereading these. Final one I wanted to touch on <clears throat> of these things I've been obsessed on in the past is a fellow named Thor. I recently got this volume two omnibus of the Jack Kirby Stan Lee run. So so much of these obsessions come back to those guys. Um, I would like. I hope there'll be a third volume. There's the. Um, this is when. Th after the sort of initial Thor setup, I thought this this period, this second half or last two thirds of the Kirby Lee run, were really really exciting. Um, and at times I've owned some of these comic books, and it kind of really pains me to think that somehow I don't own them anymore. Not all of them. It was always just scattered bits of Thor, <clears throat> but I was always very obsessed by Thor. Um, here's one of the few of the Kirby Lee runs that I could find now, and, but I might still have them tucked away somewhere. I had I I started as a kid on the John Buscema ones, but there, like with the Fantastic Four, there were when I started reading in the '70s, there were already uh, magazines devoted to reprinting Kirby Lee runs. So I read a lot of Thor in whatever the reprint magazine was. I can't remember now, so I used to own that. Plus, I bought all the current Thors at the time. Most of these are a terrible mess. Come out of boxes where I haven't um, haven't got around to bagging them, because I used to be a person who never bagged comics. <clears throat> Love Magog. Especially the original Magog story by Kirby and Lee. Um, so I always remember more Thors. I've got got to have much more Thor tucked away somewhere. But anyway, or given foolishly given away. Um, I used to own this the the issue that had this cover on it. Um, as a kid, it was like the oldest comic book I owned. It was a 15-cent comic book, and I thought it was the best comic book I owned. Um, I was just Jack Kirby inked by Bill Everett. It was just incredible. So I think I have all of the Thor essentials, certainly all the ones that were drawn by Kirby, but I think I have a few more beyond that. <clears throat> And as I've, I, I keep trying to decide whether to buy the Walt Simonson Thor 
omnibus, which I've shown before, that my daughter and I keep getting out of the library. Um, here's some interesting black and white Thors. This one's Bizarre Adventures, Thor and Other Gods. Um, has an interesting Thor drawn by, what was his name, John Bolton? Yeah, John Bolton, which is really beautiful to behold. I wonder if that was ever reprinted anywhere. And Marvel Pre Preview Presents Thor, a black and white one. Who did this one? Oh, this is, looks like John Buscema and Tony Dezunia. But um, I even own this one, The Tales of Asgard, which is the recolored Tales of Asgard which I also own digitally, um, which would also be in the backs of all of these co other reprints I've got. Anyway, so here, I'm here I am obsessing over my obsessions. Uh, I will later do a video about comics that I'm currently possibly obsessing about. Uh, I'm just out of time, and out of reach here is Tom Strong. Let's see. <clears throat> I think one of the last comics sort of in the past that I obsessed about was Alan Moore's Tom Strong. I'm not quite sure why, even, over all the stu great stuff that Alan Moore did. And Alan Moore is one of the people who kept bringing me back into the comic book shops. When he's, like, he started some new project, I would head back into the comic book shop and see what he was doing. So Tom, Tom Strong just was super retro and faux nostalgic and everything and for some reason I find it very compelling and I bought all kinds of stuff if it was related to Tom Strong but I, I kind of gave up pretty quickly after Alan Moore stopped writing it. There's one I just picked up a while ago and haven't read written by Ed Brubaker. Uh, and then I thought it was so great I gave away a huge amount of issues to my nephews. They've never even told me if they liked them. Uh, most of the art was by Chris Sprouse, but they would often have flashback sections done by other artists. Um, so it was always interesting what, what other artists would they bring in to do, to do the flashback section. Anyhow, thanks for indulging me if you've uh, made it all the way through these silly little obsessions. Talk to you later.